Hello, and welcome to another episode of Reviews in a Rabbit Onesie, the show in which I, Dan Leith, review things in a rabbit onesie. Coming on up now, out of the darkness, my life shines on, my life shines on, my life shines on. That's right, the two movies that we're putting head to head this week are both romantic dramas from the 90s where the protagonists are visually impaired. Love is blind. Which brings us to movie number one, 1999's At First Sight. Now this movie is based on a book called To See or Not To See, that is the question. But it's also based on a true story, so I guess the book was based on the true story and the movie's based off the book. So right from the get-go, this movie looks and feels like it was made for TV. The plot of the film is about Amy, who's a sad architect, played by Vera Savino. She escapes the hustle and bustle of New York City, fucks off on a trip, where she meets a blind man named Virgil, who's played by Val Kilmer. She first sees him playing ice hockey in the dark, like some sort of rogue blind ghost. But she meets him probably when he gives her a massage. Because he's a masseuse. Of course he is. He's good with his hands. Be careful, honey. He's all hands. He gives her, like, the best massage of her life. He even has a special massage to get rid of the stresses of New York City. This knot right here is the angry horn of a yellow cab. This knot right here is 9-11. No, wait, that hadn't happened yet. Anyway, the massage is so good that she starts crying. They bond. There's lots of innuendo. It kind of feels like you're watching some sort of Mills and Boone style erotic housewife fiction. Anyway, clearly it's the best massage of her life. She chases him outside after it's over. Somehow she has failed to pick up the fact that he's blind. Maybe because he uses a hockey stick as his white cane. Woo! Wayne Gretzky, look out! Anyway, once she realizes, she freaks out while saying the phrase, I'll see you, too many times. And then she goes back to her hotel room, ties the scarf around her eyes. Are you trying to see what it's like to be blind, Amy? What is this? So she stumbles around a hotel room and ends up trashing it a bit. Then Virgil just randomly shows up at the hotel room after having a conversation with his dog about meeting someone. So the two go out for a walk, bond some more, get caught in a rainstorm. Other cliches. There's a scene about using the rain to hear dimensions in a room which is in equal parts ridiculous and beautiful. Close your eyes. Listen with your whole body. There's a lot of awkward moments where Amy keeps trying to kiss Virgil and he seems unaware. What the fuck? She then explains to him what the horizon is and they fall in love after an awkwardly erotic massage scene complete with heavy breathing. <sighs> So they organize a date, then she stands him up and fucks back off to New York. She needs to do something about her business and also gloat to her ex-husband, who she still works with, about the sweet new blind guy she's seeing. So, uh, spill the beans. He's smart. He's funny. He's blind. Amy, you're a bit of a dick. But then she returns to Virgil for a lot more heavy breathing and a lot more cliches. Mouth. There's a lot more awkward erotica. I guess it's sexy in a Channel 5 I've never really seen sex before way. And seriously, what's with the heavy breathing? Val, do you have box sinuses? Or has your sense of smell been enhanced so much that you need to take in that much air through your nose? What's going on? Anyway, Amy is clearly not very happy dating someone who's visually impaired, so she looks up about some miracle eye surgery that's happening in the city. She's a bit of a meddler, to put it lightly. I forgot that it's helped the handicap week. So Amy and Virgil fuck off to New York and get the surgery done. The rest of the film is about Virgil adjusting to having sight again, but also about how terrible their relationship is, which is terrible. Yeah, I'm right, you're blind. I'm standing right here for you and you don't even look. A lot of Virgil's reaction to gaining sight and what happens is actually very interesting, but it's also very badly filmed. I mean, has no one told him about the concept of mirrors? Hello? Amy decides she's gonna take care of him, teach him what things look like again. I think she probably shows him about two or three items and then the fourth on the list is her naked body. No period of adjustment. She's like, here are some balloons. Here's my vagina. Then Nathan Lane shows up as some sort of therapist that teaches him about apples. Is it an apple or just a picture of an apple? He also takes him to a strip club, slaps him about to teach him a lesson. There's a scene with the most thumping 90s disco ever. It turns out this DJ set is happening before a surprise party. This is pre-surprise! How will the guy not hear this party? I, I, 
Anyway, the movie continues. Amy keeps flirting with her ex and kisses him at a party. Oh, fuck my life. It's a love triangle. There's a lot of couples arguments. Why do you try so hard? There's a very patronizing scene where she does lots of facial impressions of different emotions and also a seal, followed by a bit of erotic shower sex. <sighs> It's basically just a pervy, cheesy, creepy, at some point so bad it's good, but ultimately very painful mess. I mean, I won't give the ending away, but I'm pretty sure you'll see it coming. No pun intended. Oh no, wait, it's about her art. Virgil, I finished the sculpture. Of course. I didn't know where it was going to go. But that was okay. Fuck you, Amy. Wait, hold on a minute. I've just realized that Virgil has frosted tips throughout the entire movie. And Nick Carter style curtains? What? Who's maintaining that look? What the fuck? To be fair, it makes about as much sense as a lot of the rest of the film. It's just a hot mess of a TV movie. Utter nonsense. What did I learn from this movie? I learned that my dog Jethro would be a shit seeing eye dog. He'd just eat all the food off my plate and walk me into traffic. I also learned that it's hard to like a movie in which the protagonist is a narcissistic piece of shit that tries to change a blind man. Two out of five, seeing eye dogs. Which brings us to movie number two, 1992's Scent of a Woman. Hoo-ha! Now this movie was written and directed by a fella called Martin Brest. I'm sorry, I'm a child. And from the get-go, you can see that it's a better film. It's well shot, it's got a better score, it's got a great cast. Anyway, the film is about a schoolboy called Charlie Sims, who's played by a rather young Chris O'Donnell. No, I'm right, I'm right here. And in an attempt to earn some money, he gets a job looking after a blind ex-veteran, Colonel Frank Slate, played by Al Pacino. Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha! I mean, Al Pacino is just a treat in this movie right from the get-go. There's a very entertaining scene where Frank and Charlie meet. Just call me Frank. Call me Mr. Slade. Pacino is chewing the scenery in all of the right ways. Where are you from? Frank makes an instant impression, describing his family as having the IQ of sloths and the manners of banshees. And he seems overly concerned about Charlie's pores. How's your skin, son? Well, I, I've had a few sets. It's clear he's going to be a difficult man to look after. Meanwhile, back at school, Charlie and a young Philip Seymour Hoffman witness three other students pulling a prank. They like fuck up the head teacher's car with white paint or jism or something. And then the head teacher tries to blackmail Charlie for the information, threatens him with expulsion, offers him a scholarship to Harvard if he rats the other boys out. So that's Charlie's dilemma. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. He could really do with the scholarship, but at the cost of his integrity, who knows? Well, I do because I've seen the film, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. You should watch it. And then Frank tells Charlie that they're going on a trip. Frank also seems to be a bit of a pervert. Pussy. Ah! He's talking dirty to a taxi cab operator. And even when he's leaving, he gives the cat some weird advice. When in doubt, fuck. Why are you telling your cat to fuck Frank? Hoo-ha! There's a similar theme in these movies where the visually impaired protagonists are both kind of perverts. Tits. Hoo-ha! I mean, Frank's kind of like a blind Barney Stinson. I mean, he's just fucking off with his new aide to buy hookers. This is just the start of your education, son. But then it seems there's more to this than meets the eye. Frank essentially tells Charlie that he wants to experience some of life's simple pleasures and then blow his brains out. Frank's not a happy man. Frank needs help. Then there's a very awkward scene at a dinner table where Frank tells his nephew to go down on his wife. Blind asshole. That ends in a bit of a physical altercation. We also find out that Frank lost his eyesight in a juggling accident. It makes more sense when you find out he was juggling grenades. Kind of. Boom. And I'm not going to tell you too much more about the movie because it really is a treat and you should give it a watch. It's a film about two people in need of help helping each other. It's about mentorship and justice within the education system. It's about learning to deal with the bad hand that life sometimes deals you. Oh, where do I go from here, Charlie? Chris O'Donnell is great as Charlie. I'm ready. Al Pacino is incredible as Frank. I got no life! Just some fucking incredible acting. I'm in the dark here! I'm in the dark! It all kind of gets into a bit of a courtroom schoolboy showdown with an incredible speech from Pacino. There is nothing like the sight of an amputated spirit. There is no prosthetic for that. I mean, there's a couple of moments that are too far-fetched. There's a scene where he does the tango. There's a scene where Frank is driving a Ferrari. 
And these scenes are really good. It just seems that they belong in a different movie, like a European farce or Ferris Bueller. But despite this, this movie's just fucking great. Frank is such a charismatic, charming asshole. He's a bastard with a heart. Can relate. Pacino's at the top of his game, deservedly won an Oscar for the part. You outdid yourself. And I would highly recommend this movie to anyone. What did I learn from this movie? I learned that there are no mistakes in the tango. Not like life. I also learned that Al Pacino damaged his cornea in the filming of this movie. He apparently fell into a bush and was method acting so hard that he didn't close his eyes. I think the method acting also caused his other senses to be heightened. Turned his acting sense up to 11. Hoo-ha! Glory, glory, hallelujah. I'm not sure it's ever come down since. Anyway, that scent of a woman. Absolute delight for all your senses. Four out of five seeing eye dogs. Thank you for watching Reviews in a Rabbit Onesie. I've been Dan Leith. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, subscribe. If you want to see me review anything else, then please leave a comment underneath. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay off the roads if there's a blind man driving a Ferrari. He can't see where he's going. Hoo-ha! Finn.